Hi, everybody. Uh, we're really excited. Uh, we're streaming. Well, I'm streaming live from Treaty One territory in the homeland and the heartland of the Métis Nation, and as I like to argue, the heart of Turtle Island. I am um, really excited today um, to have a dear friend and somebody I adore, uh, Jean Marshall, who's an incredible uh, bead worker, as many of you know. And um, every time I see her stuff and I don't need, the person doesn't even have to tag her, I instantly know whose it is. And I'm like, oh, that's Jean, that's Jean. And like, uh, it's just such, you have got such a distinctive taste in your color palette and the way that you like to organize and actually your patterns. And so um, it's a real delight uh, to get to have you today. Um, Jean lives on the shore of Lake Superior and she's been practicing as a visual artist for over the past 20 years and um, her work is primarily in beads and textiles. And this past year we got her to do an augmented reality work. Uh, for those of you that got to see it for Nuit Blanche, it was pretty amazing. And um, uh, she, you know, she, she does, uh, she's been around bead work and um, all this kind of like, uh, I guess, embodied knowledge from her, from her family. And it's been an incredible opportunity. I got to meet Jean a long time ago in Toronto and see her work um, at the Toronto Crafts Council, I think was the first time I saw your exhibition. And so it's just been awesome to get to know you. And even though I would much rather have you in the physical lab um, than you know, virtually, but you get to be home in your nice comfy space and, uh, and get to show us. So it was a real honor and a pleasure to have you as part of the artist for the lab residency. And um, yeah, I, I'm going to leave it up to you. And uh, this is kind of our last one. We're going to close down for the July and August so that we can <laughs> get some rest and do some swimming and some bush time. And so we'll look forward to doing some more stuff in the fall. So Jean, the floor is yours. OK, thank you. Well, first of all, I'll um, like to thank you for inviting me to be a part of this residency. Um, I've enjoyed watching the progress on on the Instagram. Um, I guess I'll start by introducing myself. Bojo Gakanawia, Gina Dijnikas, Kitchener Makas of Bing and Donji, Mayangan and Dodum, and Mki Wakudong and Dijida Nungam. So my name is Jean Marshall, and I come from a place called Big Trout Lake which is a, fly, a remote flying community in Northwestern Ontario. Um, I'm from the Wolf Clan and I presently reside on the territory of Fort William First Nation um, near Thunder Mountain. Um, so Ju Julie had invited me to um, do, do a beating, work, beating workshop. And this is actually um, the first workshop I've done uh over zoom through like all of the pandemic I, I haven't really adapted well to uh teaching and i really miss i really miss teaching and uh one-on-one -on -one work um i wonder if i can see people's faces i feel like it's really weird i, I feel like i'm we talking can, to myself we can totally put on actually it was funny before you came on everybody had their video and i was like we can have it really intimate it can be very different so we can go into gallery view i know kathy and linda will definitely turn on their video if i ask yeah them. i mean it, it's up to people's comfort level but i was just sort of yeah okay just i'm happy to see everyone's faces but um yeah i guess the the structure for today um as an introduction to beadwork, um, depending on where we all are, like it could morph into something else. Um, but I prepared today to do a demo and show each of you how to do edge beading, a few different edge beading techniques. Uh, I was trying to think about what I could do um, that would that that would be attainable within the short time that we have together. Um, I think we have a max of two, two hours or two and a half hours or something. So we'll just see how things go today, how people are feeling. Uh, I would love to hear from everybody before we even get started. Just um, your name, where you're from, and a little bit about your background with sewing, um, if you have any. Um, just tell me a little bit about yourself before we get going. Uh, there's not very many of us, which is really nice. So we can actually um, do that, you know. So why don't we, I'll just call everyone out because I'll, I'll just go around the circle on my screen. So we'll go to Linda Grisani first. Mute, unmute yourself. Awesome. <laughs> 
Hello everyone, my name is Linda Grusani. I'm a member of the Kitigan Zibi Anishinaabe First Nation and a second generation Italian Canadian. I live on the unceded Anishinaabe territory that is also called Ottawa. I am a doctoral candidate in cultural studies at Queen's University. And I know Jean for, I feel like I've known Jean forever, but it's really been a short amount of time. <laughs> so, and uh, I guess this foray into beating starts with the beating symposium in Winnipeg uh, last uh, February. Um, you know, just as the world changed, I uh, met all these amazing people and started beading. And so even my journey with beadwork has been quite short. Um, so, but it's uh, really, really been something that, uh, you know, allowed me to come through this pandemic, um, maintaining my sanity and, and feeling better about certain things uh, just by engaging with beadwork and engaging with other beaders because that's really been a lifeline uh, during these times of isolation. So, Jimmy Gwetch uh, for um, organizing this today and Jean, Jimmy Gwetch for your teachings. Oh, uh, we'll move on to, thank you, uh, Linda. We'll move on to Kathy. <laughs> I could go on. <laughs> <laughs> Please do, that was wonderful. Tanshi Kowal, Kathy Maddis, Dishna Koshan, Neil Medchef, Spruce Woods, Manitoba, New Weekend. Dakishna Magayan, Dali University, De Brandon, but will soon be at the University of Winnipeg. And I've been beating since I was, uh, about 19 years old, my auntie Jean Baron Ward, who did it uh, most of her life, she uh, taught me then and I haven't stopped yet and I'm always trying to learn more and, and to do it better and I'm so thrilled about this. Uh, it's so interesting because I'm doing edging right now, like literally, <laughs> and uh, being a left-handed beater, sometimes it's hard, so I, I'm really looking forward to, to learning from Jean and uh, I first met her because she has graciously, graciously agreed to be in a show I get to co-curate with Sherry Farrell Reset and Michelle Lavely called Radical Stitch. So I uh, look forward to hanging with you this, this afternoon. Uh, thank you, Marcy Mugwich. Thanks for coming. Super excited to be a part of that, that show as well. Um, okay, I'll call on, I don't know if Mar Mar Marieki Mariek, I don't know if she wants to say anything or is she working? I'm not sure. Or how to pronounce Hi. it. <laughs> Marika. <laughs> nice to meet everyone. I, I see some familiar faces. I work for Julie and so I'm gonna be around in the in the background to make sure, you know, if someone emails me like the Zoom link isn't working or anything like that. So <laughs> but I hope you enjoy the workshop. <laughs> Thanks for helping organize it. Uh, Sandra? Uh, okay, uh, that's okay. Hi, Sandra. Um, Hannah. Sing say what way? Hannah Claus Yanjats Jotjage Gidru. My name's Hannah Claus. I'm coming to you from Jotjage, otherwise known as Montreal. I'm happy to see some familiar faces. I, I love the fact that Zoom can bring us together from across Turtle Island. It's amazing. Jean, I don't actually know you, but I've been a big admirer of your beat work for a long time. I think, I think the first time was I was on a residency with Jordan Bennett. Uh, I'm a visual artist. I was on a residency with Jordan Bennett. I think he just finished being in Banff with you at the same time. And he had this amazing beaver hat. Am I like imagining yeah. it or is this right? Yes. So right. I'm really hesitant because often I get things mixed up. Anyway, that was where I first like heard your name. I was just like, wow and have since continued to be wow about things. And I feel like this is really kind of like magic because I've been complaining that I want to learn how to do edging. I'm a newbie beater, I would say. I've been working with, um, uh, well, I guess I'm recently co-founded an artist-run center, Daphne, uh, in, uh, in Montreal and in Jage, and we have our bead nights tonight, actually. And I'm very much a newbie beater, but I was saying I want to learn edging. And then I saw this happen. And I was like, yay, Julie, and uh, managed to sign up. So there you go. Awesome. 
Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Hannah, for coming. And I too, I'm familiar with the work that you do in the world. So it's nice to see you face to face. Um, Jordan asked me to make him that that beaver hat. We were in, in Vamp doing a, a residency called Trading Post. So it was all about like the concept of um, how we interact in the world and everything's about reciprocity and what does that mean for you? So they actually had like a trading post set up where you could make something and um, someone could, you know, say, say I, I put this on, on the shelf and if someone wanted that, they would come to me and, and say, do you want me to make a web page for you? Or, or do you want me to write something? Or do you want to do yoga with me? Or it was really, really a cool uh, residency. So Jordan traded me a, a seal, a seal skin for that hat. So yeah, Jordan is lovely. Um, okay, we'll move on to Lene Asham, if you're willing to share. I know you came in a little bit late. We're just in, doing a brief introduction. Lene in the house. Hi, sorry, I was Hi. trying to find the unmute. Hey, just, Lene. <laughs> we're just introducing ourselves and just a little bit of background if you have sewing experience or, or not. Sure. Um, I guess I've been beading since I was like a little kid and then I would pick it up here and there and then um, I'm a stay at home mom so I just started investing more into beading and yeah so I bead. I don't bead on like on uh, surfaces it's more like stringing together and I try teaching myself uh, edging so it was all crooked. Yeah, that's all. Okay, awesome. Um, it'd be nice to see some everyone's work after we can have a little show and share, see what people are up to. Um, we'll move on to Athalie Allen. Unmute yourself, Athalie. Yeah, I'm, I'm Athalie Allen. I, I come from the UK. Uh, I live in a place called Molesy, which is near Hampton Court, which is near London. Um, but uh, the reason I've come on this is I'm very interested about beadwork. Um, I did do some beadwork many years ago, uh, timbre beadwork, which is different. So I'd like to learn another technique. Um, I'm retired um, now and I just, I, I like to stitch. And I like to sign up for the Eventbrite workshops. So <laughs> just a brief, brief thing about me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for visiting us today. Oh, and thank you for having me. <laughs> Awesome. Um, Eric Hansen. Hello, hello. I'm Eric Hansen. Hello, hello. Hey, how's it going? Um, <clears throat> yeah, my name is Eric Hansen. I'm taking this course yeah. today uh, on behalf of my wife, um, who is a beater. And apparently she's right over there, but she's working. So somebody has to teach her how to do the edges. So I'm going to learn today. Um, and I was originally taught by a delightful young lady named Jean Marshall. <laughs> it was um, teaching how to bead on um, the big fur mitts. So, and Lisa says hi. So, <laughs> awesome. Thank you for joining us, Eric. And um, Monica, you last but not least, or maybe University of Winnipeg also, but Monica. Hi, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm also in Winnipeg. And uh, my, um, my craft focuses on textiles. I usually uh do embroidery or sewing projects uh, but i used to do a lot of beading and when i was a teenager so i'm just kind of getting back into it so excited excited to learn so thanks thanks for joining us and university of winnipeg are you interested to say anything or i can let bryce talk i was like you want to say hi bryce <laughs> sure <laughs> so, hi, my name is bryce uh, i'm uh, i'm from the media services department at uh, the university of winnipeg and i'm uh, lending uh, my uh, tech expertise to the event today. Awesome, thanks a lot. No problem. 
Well, it's nice to hear from everybody and get to know a little bit of where everyone's at. It sounds like there's a few of you um, who are already on board with beading and, and know where you're at. So for people who are very beginning, um, this is a great workshop for you to be a part of. Um, and those of you who are experienced might be surprised you might learn something new today. Um, like I was saying earlier, I um, haven't done this and it, it's always teaching beadwork for me is actually really difficult, even in person. Um, I love when someone approaches me about beadwork and it's one on one and I, we just spend time together. That's that's my most favorite way um, to sew with people because it's just I can watch them and we can be together. So this is a little bit different um, for the beginners. If you feel you may feel frustrated and it may be hard to see um i i urge you urge you i uh, encourage you uh to just let me know if, if something's confusing or if you are feeling discouraged or frustrated just let me know um i'm gonna just keep doing demos over and over again and um for us over here like when i when i was growing up um i didn't even know i was learning but I, I was watching my my aunt my aunties. My mom beaded, but not like my aunties. My mom showed me how to do beadwork when I was a teenager, and I just wasn't interested. I, I was not remotely interested. It was just boring and tedious. And why would I do that? You know. So, but I I always seen beadwork my whole life since I was a little kid. Um, in my family, everyone has uh, like Eric was saying the the gauntlet mitts, the skidoo mitts. They have like the, oh, oh, I put all my winter stuff away, but the beadwork up, up in here. Uh, sometimes they don't have beadwork at all, but things like that I was always visually seeing. So um, earrings, medallions, just all the things, all the things. Um, so my auntie Isabel is actually the woman in my family who I have looked up to the most. And she has shared so much of her knowledge with me um patterns and techniques and i've learned from so many so many beaters and leather workers and quillers it's unbelievable um i think with this art form and all art forms it's all about reciprocity like it really is you just you learn something and you share it it's just what you do um and it feels good to do that you know like i love when i share something with someone and they have that moment of like oh wow like i i know how to do this you know and then a year later you see their work and and it's just this is just very cool, you know, what can come from from a small moment of time together. So I guess to start, um, I also don't really think things through like I'm not an organizer. I'm not an organized person. I was just like, okay, Zoom today, and I just put some stuff together. Like it was in my, it was on my mind, Julie. Don't worry. <laughs> but I that's never just worry. Like, just so we're clear, I never worry. I okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. Um, I'm not losing any sleep. I think what I'll start with first is like the most important thing, like when you start doing beadwork, um, you need to, you do need to have some organization, you need to have like a bundle, I call it a bundle, like a sewing bundle or a sewing kit. So somewhere that you put all of your items. So right now I'll just briefly go over a few of the things that you need um, to have to do beadwork. This is also my first time doing this. So I'm going to transfer over to my camera. So I'm going to just show you my beading kit. So my friend Shannon actually made this for me. So it's like she beaded it and it's like quite Okay, fancy. okay. Fancy. I know, right? I'm like, just, I'm like, okay. Totally showing off is like my one thing that I like really treasure, but she made this for me um, and in it, so I can't move my camera. So my camera is just staying in one spot because I don't know how to function anyway else, but it has scissors in it. And it has, um, this is like a fancy needle case. Mm -hmm. So I put my needles in this little um, case there. I have tweezers, which come in very handy for all sorts of things. Um, over here is kind of like where you can put pins, um, safety pins, uh, whatever you need. And here is, this is like really fancy. This is like the, you know, like everything all together. So if I travel, I, I, I just grab this and everything's in there. So I have a metal thimble. If you do leather work, you, you need to use a metal thimble. And I, I meet a lot of young uh, sewers who who have butchered fingers from doing all this work. And 
and and and they 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 can't get used to using the thimble and um a dear woman uh who has since passed on judy lafferty and her sister lucy yakalela they use a metal thimble and one day i witnessed one of them not being able to find their thimble and it was like a little bit of a panic because this is such an important tool for them um, it helps them to to sew through the leather with ease and uh, protect their finger so that they so that they can sew. Um, so I hear people sometimes sewing uh, and, and their finger gets so beaten up that they actually have to take a break to heal their finger. So I just wanted to mention that and also like when you're sewing with when you do beadwork you likely work with leather. So my friend Kenny Wabagizek told me this little tip rubber glove, this is just a tip of a rubber glove that's been cut and you put it on your finger and it helps you to pull the, the, the needle through your material. So usually I have two on. I, everyone has different fingers that they use when they're sewing, but I use my middle finger and my, my, my index finger, is that what it's called? I use those two fingers. Those usually have um, the rubber glove tips on there. So that's something that was a game changer for me. Um, so that's your sewing kit. That's really important to have. Um, there's also different kinds of thimbles that you can you can use. You that's the one we one. just got for the workshop with your friends. The um, the uh, R F or R S. Um, oh, the our uh, Shannon and Ryan. Yeah. So we yeah. Just, so Shannon made my. She did, like, and I'm making the rest of it but i'm like it's unfair it's like because mine sucks compared to theirs but anyways oh come we on got, we got we got those we got the those thimbles and they're awesome yeah those leather, leather ones oh so speaking of that that little negative comment there about saying your sucks um i Sorry. find that <laughs> because it doesn't suck but like Thank you. someone had said to me about like the way you speak about your work sometimes is a reflection of what you think of yourself. Oh, and I no. personally don't think that you think you suck. But no. uh, my friend um, Cher is a phenomenal bead worker and she's never happy with what she does. And it's just, it's interesting. This person said, the way you talk about your work is often a, a reflection of something within yourself that you're not happy with. And I was just like, what? That is so crazy. And so I catch myself saying things like, oh, is that a, oh, that's, you know, you catch yourself saying things like, like, yeah, oh, whatever. Like, oh, those are like, oh, here, I'll show you these. these I made these for my sister-in-law. And I said, no one is ever going to wear these <laughs> because they're so ugly. I said that. I actually said that about these and she said, are you crazy? She said, I'll wear those. She's like, I'll take them. And I was like, okay. But for me, it was just like sometimes um, where sometimes where I'm at creatively is reflected in my work. These colors to me are for me, they show me that I wasn't in like, like I wasn't in the zone when I made these. Like I just was in the motion of doing what I needed to do. But there is edge beading on here and you can't see it very well, but they're really light yellow. Um, okay, so this is the experiment today is like, can you guys actually see anything? The, the really is, light. Is that, is that made on, on a piece of leather then? So it's actually sewn onto a piece of um, like Pellon or, or like oh, this yeah. white stuff, this. Um, yeah. Yeah, what Linda's showing there. You sew it onto that and then you back it with a piece of leather or so something that doesn't fray on the edges and then you use the edge beading to sandwich it all together that's oh, okay. that's the beauty of the edge beading is it it finishes uh, finishes your projects really nice. So i'll move into that right now actually i'll just show you guys some samples of some beadwork. Um, that has edge beading but actually before that i'll show you what we're going to be doing today. So I thought what we'd do today is we're going to make a sampler. So we're just going to, so whatever material you have on your end, um, something stiff. Um, I just cut out a circle. You can cut out a square or a circle, whatever you decide. Um, and we're going to do this, this edge beading technique, which is um, called the zigzag and the yellow. And then the, there's like um, just the straight edge one. And then we start stacking on the on, on the red. So 
all of these techniques are very simple. Once you learn the first one, all of your brain will kind of like have that aha moment and you'll understand. The pink one is the same as the zigzag, except you've added an extra bead. And then this is your stacking in the blue. So we'll go over that. Uh, I'll do some demos and I have these big styrofoam balls to show you, but um, actually I'll show you this. Um, this is an excellent example of, of edge beading. And this is a Christmas ornament that Linda actually made me for Christmas. So I'm just going to put this on here and I saw some of so Linda's handiwork came to Manitoba via Miss Agliorte, who's supposed to be joining us. We'll see if she gets here or not. So that's a good example of the zigzag technique. Um, this is something that I made recently. So the beads on the edge are, um, they're bigger. They're like, a, you can use any size of bead that you want. So today when I do my demo, I'm showing you with bigger beads. Um, so that's that, that's a zigzag. And then this is a single, single edge. Oh, this is hard to see. Yeah, the single edge one seems like it's, it's harder in the way that like, I mean, I'd be curious to hear what you say. And partly I was saying that like, I was being humble because I don't actually beat. I was just like, but I'm trying. And that's why I was like, ooh. But the, those definitely, the the single ones look harder to do because it's a it's you, it, you can't hide anything in it like in the zigzag like I know this is probably not the but it's like there there's the way that the pattern goes you have a little bit more flexibility than the single what do you guys yeah, think sure. I agree I find um, let me show you these these earrings I wonder if you could see these because this shows whoever made these these are my sister in laws but whoever made these. Um, the edge beading is. So fine. These are size 15 beads Can you guys see that the edge beading on there. They're tiny but it's just like the stitches must be. Um, right beside one another. So it's. Um, yeah, yeah, it's all about the, uh, the 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 distance between your beads. You have to be really consistent, and when you start for the beginners, it's gonna be it's gonna be wonky, and and that's how you learn how to do it. That it's absolutely how. If it doesn't look right, then then you need to you need to problem solve, and that's the beauty of beadwork, right? You can, you're constantly problem solving. There's never like there's always a solution to whatever it is that you're doing and that's something that i love about this there's no, i never go back i'm always like okay got to figure this out so i think what we'll do is we'll just jump right in and i'll do a demo of the first stitch that we're going to learn otherwise i'll just like keep talking and talking so i have this um i have this little board this little i think linda's seen me do this before um i have this we're going to imagine that this is your your material that you're working on so that material is is called pelon um, interface it could be a piece of denim or canvas when you're doing beadwork you want to sew on something that doesn't have stretch so sometimes people will um, use heat and bond on a piece of fabric to put it on the back and then put a piece of canvas on the back. There, there's so many different ways of doing things, but the best is is this modern stuff that's called interface or, or Pellon because it's you don't need to iron anything. It's already sturdy and you just sew right onto it when it comes in black and white. Yeah, so I think, Linda, if you can hold yours up, yours is a different thickness than mine. Yours looks thicker, so you can buy thinner pieces and thicker pieces depending on what you're making. Yeah, that, that's awesome, thank you. So this ribbon is actually my string and this green thing is my needle. And I have my beads here, they're these styrofoam balls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start by putting on um, three beads. So you're gonna do the same thing, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna watch me first. So don't get involved with your things in front of you, just watch what I'm doing and and I'm not going to talk when I'm doing it because I find that um, 
the words make it more complicated. So I'm going to do it once and just carefully watch what I'm doing. And after, we'll see if anyone caught on to it, OK? And after you've done the demonstration, can you tell us what your preferred uh, thread is? Like, what, what, like, are you a nylon person? Are you a fish line person? Are you? I'm a whatever I got kind of person. <laughs> okay, um, perfect answer. <laughs> Yeah, so whatever, honestly, like if there sometimes people have workshops and they have leftover stuff and they'll just give me some things. So I do like uh, this. I've had it for quite a while. I've had two schools of it and I don't know what it is. It must be nylon. I think so, yeah. It's a nice cream color. I, I really just use like cream and black. Like if I'm working with light colored beads, I'll use the light thread. If I'm looking, working with dark beads, I'll use dark thread. But also, like, you can change the look of your beads. If you have dark beads and you use light thread, you can actually change the look of your beads. And if you use light beads and use black thread, you can sometimes see the darkness through the light bead, which can create, um, it can create a unique style, right? Like with beading, everyone has their own unique style and their voices expressed through their work, right? Also, um, some people, what they'll do is when they do their work, they'll, you know, I have a friend who's real, like she's real hardcore and I just, I can't understand her. Um, but I love trying to, <laughs> but she'll use red beads and then she'll use red thread. So everything is like always matchy matchy. Uh, she'll even like draw her designs, like say she has red petal flowers, she'll color it all in and use the red beads. So it's everything is really, um, she likes to do it like that. Um, so yeah, uh, there's the threads, there's Mayuki thread. Um, there's, uh, uh, I don't even remember the technical names of them. Oh yeah, there's Mayuki and there's another one that's like K K O A or Fireline is excellent. So I just started using Fireline this year because the, the, Zo the Zoom workshops that I've attended, um, people go on about the Fireline and I just never, I, like I said, I use what I have, right? So uh, my boyfriend actually bought me a, a roll of it and said, you should try it out. And it's actually really good for edging because it kind of, with some thread, when you when you pull through, it, it kind of stays loose. The fire line, when you pull it, it stays and kind of locks in place. So it, it, it works really quite well. Um, any other questions before I get going on the demo? Okay. <laughs> so let's watch. Well, I'll just say one thing before we start. Three beads to start and then two beads onwards. <laughs> Is this recording? Is this part recording? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I need like a helper to hold this. And Jean, you're not doubling the string, you're just doing the one, right? Like one string. It's just one. And that two is also preferential. So um, some people love double, some people go single. And it also depends on the strength of your thread. It depends on what you're making. Um, you know, like I'm just doing a demo, I'm doing a single. If I was making something, I'd probably double it up. I don't know how successful this is gonna be, but this is awesome. I'm, I'm having I'm having fun showing like, you. Guys. It's like it's like get kids. Uh, I'm like I like it. Right. Take note of the spacing. I'm gonna grab one. Next two. Hold on. I'm just gonna put the other two on. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> This is such a great visual, Jean. Oh, I, I thought about this long and hard. I can't tell you how many videos I've watched and I, I didn't I didn't get it. And I'd replay them and replay them and replay them and I, I couldn't get it. This is amazing.
So would you say the spacing is like a beads width apart? Hannah, I think that's fair to say. Yes. Yes. Okay. And and sometimes it depends on the bead, the shape of the bead. That's like a whole other world too is um, I tend to like my beads to be all the same size when I do edge beading. I like them to look um, I like them to look in line with one another. And sometimes you can buy beads that are lower quality and are all, all different sizes, which would mean that your spacing will vary as you go, right? If you have a skinnier one and like a thicker one. Okay, so I'm just gonna jam that one through. So kids, raise your hand if you understand from that demo. How did you start the beginning? Um, all I did was go through the fabric and then you put three beads on. And you leave the tail, right? Well, how do you do it? Do you leave a tail, like no knot, uh, just a tail? When, when I'm start? done? Uh, no, when, when you start. start. Oh, uh, when I started, yeah, you just make a knot and go through your fabric. Yeah, yeah you can leave a tail. I, I always make a practice of leaving a tail. So whenever I come back, everything I do comes back around. So I use that extra bit of thread to tie onto something. Um, but yeah, so make now I'm knot. ready to, to put more on. What's that? You make a knot with a tail? Um, so you just, you just make, show a, us? You make a <laughs> knot and maybe leave like two or three inches, like enough to tie okay. to something. You don't have to do that, but um, yeah. But say I was done right now, say I finished my project and I wanted to be done right now and I have the string hanging out here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into a reverse mode and I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna go back down here. You're just gonna backtrack. I've gotta upgrade this cardboard. So you're gonna backtrack. You're gonna go through that hole that you've already created there. And then you'll just tie a knot on the back of there. So when you're doing the edge beading, if for some reason, like after this workshop, you're trying it out and your beads aren't going on the edge, you, there's something there's something that you've missed. You've missed a step. If for some reason, it's, it's sagged over. I've had people do it. And then after they show me, they're like, how come it looks like this? That's actually standing straight up and down opposed to um, up on their end on the edge. So just you're always going to be going put your three beads on and they're coming straight up Put the two beads on you're coming straight up Put two more beads on and you're coming straight up. Um, so that's that. I, that that made me sweat. Doing this. <laughs> I, I like to see the effort. <laughs> bead, the, the bead workout. <laughs> oh my god like, to be honest because it's so hot here my fingers are like um so wet like they're just sweaty right and so yeah. i just keep trying to pick up the beat like and then like i was like oh that little rubber thing i could see where that would be helpful right now because i'm just <laughs> like everything is slipping through yeah so i guess with that demo um does anyone have any questions hannah well, it's it's not a question, but I could show you an example of an edging that wasn't done properly. Okay. <laughs> Where this was just me trying to figure it out. And it's kind of like going, I didn't realize about the needle. It's kind of going across the edge. Like, okay, try to hold it still for a second. So, okay, so you kind of went, okay, I kind of see what you did. You, you, but, you, but the second one, I got it. Yes. And it was the front to back that I didn't realize on this one. Right. Like coming back up, kind of making that loop to go back up the bead has it go, go center. Right. On the edge. Yeah. That's a really good point. So I guess if you could like visualize in your mind your material 
in front of you, like going this way, mm -hmm. you're, you have your thread that's going to be on this side, your beads, and then it comes up onto the other side. So it, it is sound, it's, it's like wrapping around itself. It's hard to talk about this. Um, it's, uh, it's a tricky thing. It's just you, you learn it by doing it, right? Like, really, you just yeah, do your, it. Your visual it with the cardboard was great. <laughs> <laughs> so I have like um, this piece of red material that I was going to do um, a demo with like actual beads. And they're kind of these gray, bigger beads. And then I'm going to use white thread with a red um, background. So I thought I could do like another demo and with the actual beading and that could be helpful too um, to see that and I'll, I'll do just maybe 10 i'll add 10 beads on and you guys can watch again um it's just the way it goes just watch and learn so oh yeah okay well i'll go back to my video And then see how which way I'm gonna go to make it make sense for you guys. So I'm gonna make my stitches quite a bit lower just so that you can see them in terms of the distance. And because I don't really know what I'm doing, like I can't see so much, just tell me if my if it goes off the screen. Right now you're perfectly centered. Okay. So there's the beads, they're not edged. They're right on top, the three beads, right? But if I come up through, and don't worry about this first bead, this first bead is always gonna flop around because we haven't traveled around our piece yet. At the very end, you actually go through it and then it will edge itself. So that first bead is always gonna look wonky. So you have your three beads on, you're gonna bring your needle So I, I always just think I'm bringing it through and I'm, I'm pulling my needle away from my work. And then once I pull on it, it's going to go onto the edge. So this first one that you put on kind of decides how much spacing you need to do. If it's bunching up to itself, you need to space it out a little bit further. If it's too far apart, they're, they're not going to look like um, it's called a zipper stitch. So it kind of has like a jet, like teeth, eh? like jagged teeth. You didn't need a tail there, but I'm just going to move this a little bit. So that seems to be like a good um, distance, that second stitch. So I'm just going to eyeball it and each time I go, I'm going to make it about that distance. How deep do you want it in the actual fabric? Because I feel like that's one of the things I probably mess up the most is that like I want it, I think that it needs to be closer to the edge so that it looks nicer. But in fact, that's not what needs to happen. Well, I think that that's actually a really good question, Julie, because Sometimes, uh, like my friend Kanina, she's an excellent stitcher. So her stitchery becomes a part of the beauty of whatever it is that she's making because she, she does it so well. For me, my stitches, I just, I'm not anal enough anymore. I, maybe in my younger years, I would have been, it would have, I would have cared. <laughs> now I just, I'm happy if I can finish something. Um, but the stitches to me aren't, uh, you don't, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really, too picky about them but i mean if you like say say this was something i was making and i didn't want to see the stitches i would use red thread so it would hide it a little bit right especially if i'm not a really strong stitcher um, but i think you really need to think about the material that you're using so this material um is it has heat and bond back of it and it has two layers to it so it's quite strong yeah. um I'm not too worried about fraying happening. That's the one thing you need to think about is if you have a material that um, if you don't, if you're, if you're too close to the edge and you haven't caught enough of the fabric, it might come off. 
And that, that's, you know, that's, that's what you don't want to happen is to have a completed project and have one little weak link in it. Yeah. So yeah. I think having a strong base of your material to start with is uh, the best uh, uh, start. Does that help? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And I like the info of like, if you really do want to hide it, you just need to have it be the same color, right? Mm -hmm. So you, did you double up your thread and then tie them tied a knot uh, together at the end? I did. Yeah. So I, I didn't even really think about that. I just I just did it. Um, I, I always um, I've done some when I in my younger years, I used to do like re rep reparation re repair work for people. Uh, and sometimes um, the beadwork was done single thread. And I just thought, oh, darn, I wish it was with two, two threads because the two threads could have potentially held it together and could have been reinforced easier instead of losing the beads and trying to find the right color bead to go back with it. So when I'm making stuff, I always pretty much double. I use double thread. I was like, it seems... easy with the younger years here, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What do you mean? I was like, some of us are the same age, my girl. <laughs> well, we're 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 not as young as we were. I know it's true. It's true. I'm just, giving you, just giving you a hard time. Like I was talking to my friend yesterday, and we were reminiscing about our first job together. We were junior rangers, and uh, a couple hours outside of Thunder Bay, and we we did crazy stuff. We uh, like I said, do you remember like the things that we did? <laughs> and she said, yeah. And I, and I remember coming home and we would hitchhike home and I'd be like, see you later, dad. And hitchhiking back to wherever I needed to go. Like, I want to ask my dad, like, what were you thinking <laughs> to like allow me to, to hitchhike? Or, or maybe I didn't tell him. I don't really know. Like, I, I just can't even believe that I hitchhiked in this mind and place I am now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would never do any of the things that I did when I was 16 or 17. Okay, so I just did my three. So I went up through, yep. put the three on, went down. So what's the next step? Um, where are you? Um, Monica? Yeah, sorry, here. Oh, um, okay. So I, can, I have three. <laughs> okay, so you have your three beads on. So now what you want to do is bring the needle up through the third bead. So your needle went through the fabric. Now you're going to bring your needle up through the bead on that side that your needle is on. Um, so watch sorry. that. Sorry, I'm trying to find both of your videos at the same time. Okay. Okay, so, so I'm going to add two beads on right now. So then we'll be in the same, we'll be at the same spot together. So you have your beads on there now, right? You have your three beads there. So now all you need to do, my thread is up on this side. Okay, on the bottom. Yeah. I guess, on the white so side. Maybe this will make sense if I do it from this way. I am going to bring my needle up through. So kind of all the way around the edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. There we go. So let me know if it worked. And then did you kind of move it up, move all the beads up onto the edge? Yeah, you, you, actually from pulling that thread when if you just cinch it, it should bring it onto the edge. The first one is going to be wonky. Okay. And then I put two on. Yep. Okay. Put two more on. And you should be able to see um, the edge beading forming from that second. Okay. And then just repeat, come back up around the edge into the, the last yeah. one I did. Yeah, we'll yep. just walk you through this. So do it and then and then show us where you're at. Okay, it's hard to tell where I yeah, can, I, no, even... I can. Oops, I'm pretty sure I see that you did it. Okay. 
So now I, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so you put four beads on now, or you have probably five beads on there right now? Yeah, well, you were doing three and then two, two, two? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So keep going with it. How's everybody else doing? This is so cool. <laughs> oh, that looks good, Linda. Ooh. You're on a roll. Kathy, go a little closer. Can I see a little closer, Kathy? Uh, sure. Yeah, I think my um, spacing. Oops, sorry. This okay, one. so if you have a look at Kathy's, hers I'm eating because I'm not doing it on the thing. I'm doing it on the one thing that I actually am working on. So <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm like, you guys, I get, I get to have an hour and a half of beating in the middle of my work day. I was like, it's got to be productive. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm excited to make a sampler. <laughs> yeah, too. having a sampler is fun to have. So yeah. Kathy's is her spacing, hers are really close together. And there's no right or wrong. Like if, if you like how that looks, then you go with that. Um, so if you want it to look more zippery, Kathy, yeah, just yeah. spread them out, make your stitches a little further apart. Yeah. Hannah, that looks great. Yeah. When do you add the extra, at what point are you adding more beads? Is it before you go down or after? You after you come up through your last bead. Okay. Once you come up through the last bead, you'll see your last bead sitting on the edge of that, that material. And then you know you can add two more. Here, I'm gonna, you guys can look at me. I'm just in, wanting to investigate where everyone's at. Lene and Sandra, Athelie, how are you guys doing? I've done the three beads, but I'm stuck after that. What do you do after the three beads again, please? So you put your three beads on? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is just how it's going to be. Like when I used to teach in the schools, um, the first time, the first time I ever taught was to a grade four, four, five class. And I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. And a friend of mine was like, oh, you should teach, you know, this would be so good for the kids. And I was like, absolutely. And I went in not knowing anything, just thinking like, oh, like I just wasn't thinking. And that's how I figured out how to do the styrofoam ball thing. The kids didn't know how to tie knots. They didn't know how to put a bead on a needle. They, they couldn't even thread a needle, they couldn't do, they couldn't do anything. Um, so that's how I came upon the styrofoam ball discovery. We actually used really big styrofoam balls and I had two helpers holding this thing. Um, it was really fun. But I think actually what I'll do is I'll do this demo again so that you can see it. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be helpful for me too. Because um, when I did this in the schools, um some of the kids were so visual in their learning that they literally they got it and they got excited they just want to start with it and then there's there's other people who who don't learn that way and it, it's just it just doesn't work that way and, and i had to sit with some of them throw them up to like 10 times how to do it until they finally got it so that's what i mean wait, with like wait, wait 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 how, how did you start the beginning the beginning is what's throwing me off i could do well, the, the beginning? other stuff yeah, so basically, basically, all you're going to do, I, I just have this tied to this because it's my demo, but all you're going to do is you're going to thread your needle. And do you guys want me to show you how to tie a knot? I know how to tie a knot. Yeah. <laughs> but just oh. like as soon as you, because like the thread is showing, like here, I'll show you. Um, Can well, you hold it up? Because it looks like your, your thread is around the edge of the fabric on the purple on this thing oh yeah can you start yeah. okay so here it is right yeah. yeah and then so we don't hide this this just because i doubled it so is it just supposed to be flat or doubled um and um, then it's hooked at the beginning 
so that first bead like okay first of all we're just keeping in mind we're just doing a sampler today so oh, okay we're just that beginning piece if you went all the if you went Lene, if you traveled all the way around that piece and got to your very beginning what you would end up doing is that last bead or that first bead you put on becomes your last bead that you edge um Oh, when you come back around. When you come back around, you deal oh, with okay. that first bead. So you don't need oh. to worry about it. And in it terms of the right. knot, the knot being on the back, you always think about what's going to be the front of your work and what's going to be the back. So your knot's going to go oh, on the back. And that's where I paste something. I, I glue something on the bottom of that. Yeah. Um, okay. You know what? This is making me think a lot. You know what I do when I make something? If I have two items, um, say these say these are these are two things that I've made. These are two items that have been completed, mm -hmm. and I wanna I wanna edge bead them. So I put them together. What I would do is I would actually bring my needle it through in one on the inside. So then my knot is oh. forever lost in there, and no one's ever gonna see it. So when you look at yeah. my work, you're not gonna see the knot. The knot anywhere on there. So for oh. today, we're just using okay. one, today. We're just having one piece of fabric, and we're going through it, and we're just we're learning about it. So that's okay. like a little bit like further down the road. What you what you could do to hide that knot? Okay. Okay. Um, you don't really want to cover up <laughs> edge beading after your edge beading is done. The edge beading technique is really used to finish a product. It's it's really used to complete something. Um, and actually sew it together. So okay. like, I was fixated on that because I saw a video and I was like, I, I don't know. And then I was doubling it and I was like, yeah, yeah. but thank you. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. And also if, you, if you're working with leather, you can actually, when you start, you can travel through the thickness of the leather with your needle. How do I describe that? rather than just taking your needle and going directly through a piece of fabric like straight through it you mm -hmm. actually travel through the, the the thickness of the material and come right out through the edge mm -hmm. i don't know if that makes sense linda it does, it does. <laughs> I, think I, I don't know i was just gonna show like i didn't do that here but oh nice like oh, the, but... the so this this is beaded on a pellin and then i've i've put the black but my i went my knots in between the pellin and the black leather. Yeah. Okay, right. So are That's you great. tying a knot around the fabric? Can you go back to the cardboard? Is that possible just to go yes. through it? So actually, um, well, the cardboard example isn't very good because I just like, um, the, the ribbon isn't, I have to tie a million knots in here to make it not go through the, this hole. But if you can just imagine that I, you know but what? I'll just, is I'll it just, important that the knot goes from like around the outside of the fabric? No, it doesn't matter where the knot is going as long as you're just okay. going through your fabric. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, so, so we're we're going from the back, we're going from the back to the front. Yeah. So I'm, and I think that that's the confusing part when you start doing it because it's because you're it's basically what's that stitch called like a slip stitch like the one where you like do the front what's it called the one that you do like this whip stitch whip stitch, whip stitch. Yep. thank you I had so I'll, do the demo. I'll do the demo again for Athelie yes please I was just gonna say <laughs> So here I'm going, I have my knot on my thread right here. So I'm yep. just going through. Yep. There's my knot okay. on the back of my material. I'll talk you through it this time. I'm going to put three beads on to start. So once my three beads are on, I'm going to slide them down to the bottom. This is what you do all the time when you bead. You make sure your beads are at the end. So now it's about the spacing, which is really the width of one bead. So if you look at this, that spacing is about the size of one bead. 
Right. That big ball. Nice. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my fabric. So there, my three beads are on. Okay, so, so you went, you wrapped to the back and then went to the front. It, it, it's either way, whatever your front or back oh, is, or your back or your front, right? So you go through one side and come up on the opposite side. So oh, now okay. I'm going to come up through the speed. So I've, I came through this way. So it only makes sense for me to come up through this way right here. So you're going to have a stitch on both sides of your material, right? There's a stitch there and a stitch there. Right. So now when I when I cinch this up, that's it's, it's making my my beads want to sit on the edge because I pulled it up there. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, Athelie? Like yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I missed that. <laughs> yeah, thank and you. And then so you have you start with your three beads, and now you're gonna put two more on. Just like a jumbly mess. I'm, I'm doing my best here. <laughs> You're doing amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Um, In the real world, our threads get tangled too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's on, but it, it's not edged yet because I haven't done that second move. I've gone through the material to complete yeah. the move. I need to come up through here. Oh, right. Okay. If I ever do this again, I'm going to make a professional video of this part. <laughs> if I ever do this again. Hopefully there's no need to. <laughs> That's what I'm like. I'm hoping by fall. I'm like, I was like, I hope that we just get to do some in person and have people here. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. Well, after you see yeah. how it was sitting nice and tight. So when you pull yeah. on that, it should be sitting nice and tight now. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you just keep going and they like each of the beads supports the next bead. There's mm -hmm. I think it was the the the, the going Thank through you. the back coming out the front and th that was the one yeah. part I missed. Yeah. That I missed that as well. Oh, Hannah. Well, I I kind of just had a question about Eric's work which he'd shown up he he'd showed up, up close and looked lovely. Um and then it was like the the beads seemed to be spaced a little bit further so that the middle bead was sitting on the edge as opposed to kind of being held up by the two beads on either side of it. And I kind of wondered, is that is that what you mean by, is that how it should be like with the zipper thing? Or is that, I mean, I realized it, it can all just be like a variation, um, but I thought that looked really lovely how it was. Whereas mine, it's like the beads kind of, the one, that, that's on the middle kind of sits on top of the two beads that are sewn down. Okay, let me see. That makes sense? Uh, I don't know mine I'm is not, too, yeah. I'm not sure. Like Eric, you look like you're doing, you do have two techniques here, right? Eric, you have the, the it's all the same technique. That's the crazy thing about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, like this is, it's all the same thing. I, what I happened there? The double and then went back to the single again, and then went in between two and one just for fun. Oh, awesome. He's like getting that. fancy. Oh. <laughs> he getting fancy. So Hannah, with yours, yours are, um, they're so fine that they're, how they're sitting, the beads are, the bead is sitting on the two, which is nice. And then I just tried doing like he, he had on the last one and it's like sitting so it's spaced larger but sitting it's on the larger. edge of the fabric so he actually put two beads in between there he put he he moved on to four be adding three beads opposed to two so we started but, but even the even at the beginning his his spacing is larger than mine so it's like the yes. bead in the middle is sitting on the edge of the fabric and not on the beads right. and i guess i was just curious if when you talk about the zipper 
stitch is that mm -hmm. what it would be where the bead in the middle sits on the edge hmm. but, um i feel like the zipper stitch is just that look of going okay like that, having a space in between so okay. i think the zipper stitch could be a really tight one or it could be a further one apart um, depending okay. on on your preference of how you want it to look right yeah. um I think I but like it the slightly wider. It's really spacing. all about the spacing. So yeah. The, so once we do, I mean, I feel like um, does everyone feel confident that they they have a hold on the zipper stitch? Could I go on to a new one? Go on to yeah, the next I, stitch. I could. Athlete. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah so. I've got that now. <laughs> Thank you. So they're all the same. Keep that in mind. It's just different numbers, eh? It's, it's math. It's, oh, hello, Heather. Thank you for joining us. Hi. Sorry, yeah, I didn't get here earlier, but that's you. okay. <laughs> We're just doing a really simple uh, workshop today. I'm doing demos on edge beading. Um, so some people have experience already, and some people don't. So I'm just doing um, little brief demos and then checking in to see how people are doing. So right now. We, we've just gone through um, the zipper stitch, which is this one right here. And we're gonna move on to, the, I don't know the technical terms of things, but this is the, the, just the single. So, uh, which is the, or, the orange colored um, stitch. It's just single. So you see this on a lot of, um, you know, in the last three years, earrings have become quite popular and quite the way to express yourself um, everywhere, uh, especially um, indigenous makers making earrings. So this is a really, the zigzag technique that you just learned is really great for finishing earrings and the single. So again, I'll just ask that you uh, watch what I'm doing and take it in. So now we're just adding one bead at a time and that's it. So again, it's not on the edge. It's not on the edge until I go through it. So M Monica, um, you can see that my stitch is on the front here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come up through the back of the bead so that I get a stitch on the other side. This is the part of doing beadwork like this that is really hard for me, like the talking about it part. Because I'm so used to just sitting next to someone and, and just saying, okay, have a look, you know. So for me, I'm putting my stitches on top where I can see them. All my stitches are going, I'm going through the top part. So I know that I'm going to come through on the other side, coming up through that bead. And just give it a gentle tug to get your edge in there. Okay. So I'll do a few more. Can you guys see this okay? Yeah. Yep, that's yeah, great. great. And is after this... we're done our workshop, I'm sh I'm sure there's um, I mean Linda would probably even know where these links are, but um, there's probably tons of resources online where you could go and and um, people can show you how to do it online. Or you can just send me a message and I can do this again with you. <laughs> so yeah, that's. We have... the... We That's, have you to show us how to do it online. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. I'm seriously happy to show someone anytime if you totally forget. Um, that's what I like about actually making the bead sampler is, is you'll have this for yourself to refer back to. Um, sometimes it just it, it just helps to look back at it and, it, and you'll remember it. But I just think it's really neat that it's all the same. It's all the same motion. It's just a different amount of beads to create a different pattern, right? And you're way better than any video that's online right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Nobody has those styrofoam balls and cardboard, baby. Uh, those, those are pretty unique. Definitely very unique. That very is a good. Jean Marshall original. I was going to trademark that. I have to take that one. So I'll move on to, um, I feel like everyone's just having fun doing their thing, but um, I also feel like time goes by oddly fast doing these sorts of things. Um, so I want to make sure that I get through all of these stitches to show you guys um, the single the single technique what I just showed you guys do you guys got a handle on that one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I actually that? like that one better. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the fun thing about it is you're going to find some that you actually like that that are going to be your thing. For sure. I love the stacking. I love the stacking for doing edging on like purses. Um, I used to do lots of leather purses and things like that. Um, I haven't done them for years, but um, I really love this, the stacking. So I'll show you that next. Um, but right now I'm going to show you how to finish. So, so, so let's say I'm done right now, or I've run out of thread. When you're sewing, you always want to make sure that you have at least like three inches of thread left to finish to tie off. Um, oftentimes when I'm working with new learners, they they so, 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 and then there's just like a little teeny tiny bit of thread left and <laughs> they've made a beautiful piece. And then I'm just like, oh no, you, uh, I, I always forget to tell people to um, leave, leave uh, about three inches of thread to finish off. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm finished this piece, I'm running out of thread. So like I said before, I'm going to backtrack. I'm just going to travel through backwards where I've already been. I'm just going to go through once. Sometimes if I'm making something that I, I'm, that's really, that's going to be used functionally, I'll um, take more care to travel back further uh, to reinforce it. And I'm just going to tie a knot on the back. You go through the the thread, um, the fabric also, or just through the beads? Through the bead and the fabric. And the fabric, okay. And then you tie a knot. I always like to like travel back through my material. Like I just go through the, the width of the material. I don't know why I do that, but. So now that I ran out of thread and I'm ready to start up again, I'm going to re-thread my needle and I'm going to start up where I left off there and I'll show you how to do that. Because our workshop is so short today, um, you're going to learn how to do the techniques, but those, those, those tips and tricks of how to start and how to end, you may not get there today, like the ending things. Um, but like I said, I'm happy to give you my email at the end of the workshop. And if you have more questions, like just, just let me know. So now that I have my, I'm ready to start my, this, my stacking stitch, I wanna start up again. So I'm gonna come up, this is my back piece. The, the white side is my back that no one's gonna see. So I'm, I'm just kind of making this my front piece. So I'm gonna come up in the back and Lene, if this was if this was a piece that I was finishing and I didn't want to see anything in the back, um, hold on a second. Yeah. Yes. Grace, you want to mute her in case you want some privacy. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Sorry, I was muted there. I was thank like, you my... for thank you for muting that. Oh, you're <laughs> I was just like, my mother-in-law calls and like she she just lets the phone ring and ring and ring. Like so, I um. It wasn't her, but it was Staples. Um, so this we're, is we're, recorded too. <laughs> right, but oh, right. 
Um, Your not- mother-in-law will hear. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it was her, I would have just, um, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. So if this was two pieces that I was finishing, Lene, like I was saying before, I would I would split these two and I would come up in between it um, so that my knot would be hidden inside, like we had said. But this is my sampler here. So I'm just gonna come up through this. I'm coming up through the last bead that I did. And then I'm gonna start stacking. So the stacking is we're going to do two, st- two stacks. So we're just going to add three beads here um, to start because we just have one there. So it's actually four beads. Okay, so hold on, let me get in place here. Sorry, you had you added four beads? Um, well, I mean, if, if we were starting from the very beginning, we would start with four beads. Um, but because we have this one that we're just continuing on from, we're just starting with three. Oh, got it. Um, but if we were starting from the beginning, it would be four beads. So you have your four beads on, and then you come up through two beads. So this pattern is four and two and two and two and two. And you're, you're keeping your spacing pretty consistent to what we've been doing so far. Yeah, yeah, it's actually working out that way. It's looking like it, hey? Yeah, no, it's like, like, did you plan that? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> but you'll see on the next stitch, it won't work that way. It's going to be a lot wider. Okay. Sorry, it's just some beater envy, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> So as you can see, it's the same, it's the same stitch. We're just adding a different amount of beads. And then you can see that they're stacking now. Does that make sense, Julie? Yes, totally. I'm like, I love that you think that I'm going to learn multiple techniques, but I definitely am going to keep doing the one that I know. But, hey, uh, I'm, like, this, I'm like, yeah, it looks great. <laughs> your, your, kids, your kids are at an excellent age to learn how to do these, this beating, this beating. Oh yeah, Nahani's going to be all over it. Like she does yeah. the, the stitch that we were just doing like three times better than I. And so like, the, <laughs> she'll like that for earrings for sure, for finishing. Yeah. So I just want to check in with everybody and see where everyone's at, because we kind of jumped through two things there. Do a little check in? Yep. Are you guys still with me? I, yeah, I, mine, I got a little behind just because I was trying to practice um, ending a thread and mine, mine seemed to get really messy going back. So I kind of had to go back on what I did and delete it <laughs> in a way, edit, undo. And so now I'm just trying to go back. I have four on trying to go through two. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Kathy? I... Or Hannah? Sorry. We'll go with Kathy. Uh, first. Uh, yeah, yeah, go, 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 Kathy. I mm-hmm. got the stacking and then I got the, the single one. For me with the zipper, it's really a spacing issue that I think I'm not, I'm not consistent with the spacing, so it looks wonky, but these ones I've, I think I've got okay. I have seen um, some people struggle with spacing, um, not having, um, uh, some people will use a ruler and they'll put mark, dot marks so that it'll help them. So they're constantly going through the same spot um okay. if if that is something that that is something that you could also do um i've seen people also um put a mark on their fingernail uh with the marker so it's always the same they'll put they'll match up the stitch to the 
a mark on their fingernail so that they're they're constantly having the same size stitch so that's a really neat neat like trick to do idea. yeah for sure that would work yeah hannah i think i saw someone with a tattoo on the side of their finger of <laughs> like the bee <beat> mark <laughs> <laughs> oh really that's hardcore that's awesome <laughs> i think i saw that on instagram <laughs> So we so can I ask a question? So we go four and then we come up through the, the last two and then we just put two on and come up through those two and then put two more and go just that's how we're what, exactly. That what we're okay. Monica. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, pretty soon you'll just feel like, okay, I know how to do all these. No problem. <laughs> okay. But after the workshop, keep doing it. Maybe make a couple more samplers and, and focus on doing at least like I'd say at least 20 to 30. 20 to 30 stitches because your brain, it takes your brain some time to remember these things. And yeah, I'm really trying to write quick notes. And it's <laughs> yeah. Can you show me what yours looks like? Yeah. Show oh. us. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, this one is definitely my messiest. I can't, it, or my spacing is not as nice as the others. Yeah, I don't have the spacing on the stacked one. It's a little. Maybe it's closer than the other. I don't know, mine are like, we're like all, all leaning into each other. <laughs> yeah. It's this not one quite, is almost. It's not quite stacked. They're kind of leaning on each other. Mm. Okay, yeah, so Hannah. Too wide, um, too much. It's this the spacing is practically like the size of the bead. Yeah. So I gotta change the that. bead with the hole facing down. Because okay. the shape of a bead is they're all different sides. It's different if it's sideways, right? So um Yeah. And that's the other thing, Hannah, is when you do the zipper stitch, that second bead is actually sideways. The two other beads are laying flat. Yeah. The, yeah. The middle bead, right? So the zipper that, stitch, um, I got no problem. It was, I, I actually ha was interrupted by my teenager, so I missed the individual one. <laughs> they're oh, like so negotiating the times to stay out tonight because their exams are all finished. So it's like 11 o'clock, mommy. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I'm back. <laughs> well, the single stitch is really simple. It's just you start with two beads and then you okay. go through one bead. And then you that was my one question. Bead on, you, you go through one bead. It was just the, it was just the starting. So you start you do start with two and then go to one, yeah. and then this oh. one you start with four and then go to two. Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay, I'll catch up. Yeah. And then also, if you if you're gonna talk maybe about going around corners. <laughs> okay, so um, I just did a corner. This? Oh, Linda, you Good superstar question, yeah. badass. Excellent. <laughs> so, I usually I, I never have like a, anything square. Um, um, that's excellent, Linda. Way to go. <laughs> um, I would cut, cut the edge so it's a little rounder, so it's easier to actually go around it a little bit more flow on the edges. You definitely can go um, on the square, but it's just got more flow if it's rounded on the edge there. Yeah. So I suggest after the workshop is over, cut out a circle and um, just have fun going around it. And then you won't, don't have to worry about um, corners or anything and you can just travel around. And that would make a really great sample. And I don't know if this is a, a tip or, or anything, but when you're going around the corner, I'm using that hole for this bead. Oh, I don't know what I'm showing right now. So this, that's the last bead in my row. And I've got a hole there. I'm going back and around through the same hole to go around the corner. And then I anchor it in the same hole going around this corner and then I advance down. I should have been using a contrasting thread to show. No, we want styrofoam balls, Linda. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> But I, I, I do like the three stacks. They're all going through the same hole as I go around that corner. I don't know if that helps at all. I don't get it. Um, <laughs> so I don't either. 
<laughs> you, you, I don't know if you see the hole. Do oh, I see what you're saying. That hole is the hole for that that stack. Okay. But it's also the hole for that stack, and it's also the hole for that stack as I go around the corner. Okay, that makes sense. So essentially, there. I don't know if you can see the you, light. Through it. The corner doesn't have any anywhere to go. Yeah. So you have three beads that need to go in one spot, so you have to travel through the same hole. That makes sense. If you don't want to deal with corners, just cut them. <laughs> Do round <laughs> earrings. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I officially hate the stack. It's my. It's so terrible. I can't get it. But the others look okay. If you keep oh. practicing, if you keep yeah. the beauty of beadwork is that. If you keep practicing at it, you will see progress. That's what I love about it. If you just keep sticking to it, you know, you'll you'll get it. And, and it won't take long to see the progress. Could you share? Oh, could you share how to finish the thread again? Thanks. How to finish the thread? Like just to, yes, to finish. Please. Okay. Hold on, let me go back to Yeah, that. yeah, at the end. Okay. So here we are. I'm finished, or I'm either I'm finished or I'm running out of thread. So um, yeah. I wonder if I'm gonna just put my phone here if you can see that better. Um so now I'm going to you're just going to re reverse. So that's really what you're doing is you're just traveling back. I'm gonna travel through the beads that I've already been through and I'm also going to travel through the same hole that I went through to put that last stitch and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to tie a knot. Oh okay. On the back. Thanks. Yeah. So that's that that's it. That's all you're going to do. Oh okay. Thank you. If, if you're nervous about it coming out, you could even travel back through through another one and reinforce it more. Um, that, that's how I like to do it. Um, I, I'm sure there's probably other ways you can do it. Uh, but that's how I've learned to do to do that. Um, yeah. So we still have two more two more techniques that we haven't covered. There's the one in pink, which is four beads. And then you go through one and you add three. So you, you put four on, you go through one, and then you add three. So that one's a little bit different. The numbers are different. So sometimes what people will do is they'll actually add that. Oops. They'll actually put four and then a comma, three, and then one. So they'll remember you start by putting four beads on and then you put three beads on, three beads on, three beads on, right? Are you guys making, does it make sense? Um, is, this, is this making sense? <laughs> yes. Oh my God, Julie's like, why the hell? <laughs> I'm like, it makes perfect sense for me, for you guys. Yes, but I think it looks good. <laughs> does this one, does the pink one have a name? Um, so I don't, ha uh, I don't know. Yegum. I'm just going to call it Pinky Nagum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the technical terms for, for, for this um, okay. at all. So it's just, um, it's the exact same stitch as the first one in the yellow. It's a zigzag, except you're adding two in between. So what's happening is your spacing is becoming wider. Oh you yeah, so like a wide zigzag or something. It's a wide zigzag. You can even add three in between there if you want it to be wider. Um, and in your projects, you alternate between all these edge stitches? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. they're really fun. Like. I, I love edging because I'm it's it's yeah it's fun and you can also have a lot of fun with the color like these are just solid colors on my sampler but um, for example on the the stacking that we'll do 
next is um, you could actually have like the outside line one color and then you could have the second row another color and then the third row another color and the fourth row so you have like you can have a um, um, like funky colors <laughs> um, I'll do a demo of that because that's it's it's fun it's like I really love that one and this is the stitch that I really like a lot um, and it is tricky. Uh, I think Monica said she was having trouble um, having them like like stack properly. Uh, it, it is really dependent on your beads too. You want to make sure that your beads are all the same size. These ones aren't the same size, so they look a little bit wonky. Oh yeah. Um, and if you pull too tight, they start they'll they'll start to pull in on each other. So you want to have them just to be like tight like when you do beadwork you're never really pulling tight on things but you're you're snugging up um you know you're just gently pulling on it but you're never really pulling really tight yeah i just want to tell monica i just got the stack stitch figured out and it looks sweet once you get it done yeah Did you get the I, spacing? I feel like an asshole sorry for saying that because i i no, didn't know i like it, it out I figured it out. I was doing something wrong. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but I, so mine's better now. Okay, Yay. good. So then Jean, when you tear yours, <laughs> like those ones that are more tiered that go pointy in your other sampler, yeah. are you just going, is that an entirely different one or you're just stacking with less, I guess? You're stacking. I'm going to show you how to do that one right now. Okay. Have we given up on the one, on the other one? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you don't have to move. Okay. Okay, so are you ready for this, guys? Okay, we'll come back. Okay. I think I'm going to put a piece of black paper down so you can see my white. Yeah, I was going to see that. Maybe this will be, this will be better. So I don't have very many um, large beads. I have lots of small beads. So when I was getting ready for the workshop, I realized that it's really hard to do this and show you how to do this with the, the small beads. So can you see this, the black bead on there okay? Or is that too hard to see? There. Yeah, you can try. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good with that background and the thread yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start by putting one bead on. This is the stacking. So one bead on. Okay. To edge it, you got to come through it, right? Okay. So back to front, add one bead. Uh, back to front, add one bead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, if that's what makes sense for you. And then you come up through it and then it's edged. Oh wait, no, let's start over. So you're, the first thing you're gonna do is just put one bead on. You don't need to, hold on, I think I confused myself. Okay. So this was what I was talking about. Like, instead of coming right up through the fabric, I'm actually gonna like, travel through the width of my material and I'm actually coming through on the edge. Oh. Can you see that? So it's already going to be, my bead is going to land on the edge opposed to on top of the fabric. So that's a tricky one, but there we go. So now I'm going to put one bead on.
So see how it's already on the edge there? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so, okay, here we go. I'm gonna put a stitch through the fabric. Now I'm going to edge it by coming up through it. So now it's on the edge. Now I'm gonna add two. And I'm gonna do the same thing that we've been doing all along. Go through the fabric, come up through your two beads. These are really big beads, so it's gonna it's gonna it's not gonna look super great, but and they're all different. This sizes. is such a cool edging. I love it. Who said that? Me, Heather. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I've never seen this before. So now I'm putting three on. So you could you could stop here and start going down down to two and one again, but we're gonna go up to five. And you're going through every one you're putting on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. So now I'm gonna put on four. Okay, hold on, I'm just gonna, I'll, it'll stay still in a second. I just gotta get it through. So I'm traveling up through those four beads. I'm gonna snug this up. It's gonna be wonky. I'm gonna tell you that right now, but if you keep practicing at it, it you'll, you'll get it and where they're all standing straight and if you have the right beads. So I'm actually, because these beads are so big, um, I'm going to start traveling down now, but you could keep going. Like if you're working with small beads, you could go as high as you wanted, really. Um, and you could really have a lot of fun playing with patterning with this, with this, um, tech, this technique here. Whoops. Oh, jeeps. Mm -hmm. So Hannah, you know, Carolyn Monet? Yeah. 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 If you see her, tell her Monica says hi. <laughs> sure. Though we never see that girl. She's too busy. She's too busy. She's too busy. <laughs> yeah. I work, art star. <laughs> I work at the Winnipeg film group. So we distribute her, um, her films and. Oh, nice. And yeah. Awesome. And yes, I also just know her and Seb and they're great people. <laughs> well, come on and join us at Daphne Beats. Though Caroline actually doesn't go to the Daphne Beats, but um, I'm yeah. going to be showing the peeps there tonight, the stuff I learned here today. Oh, well, that's <laughs> great. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You normally do it on Thursdays or? Yeah, it's every Thursday, seven to nine. Okay. And Mawa has a, a beating, I think Mondays maybe. I bet if you're a bead junkie, you could find one for like every night of the week. Every night. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find a knitting one and get back into knitting. Oh, I've been doing that too. I save yeah. that for the TV though. Uh, yeah. I just need a refresher on starting and stopping. <laughs> You could do a lot of fun variations with this style like oh yeah it's this really is, great. this is brilliant i like this one's a my fun my heart one. is singing i'm so stoked on this like new thing like a, okay. yeah i wish i had more um oh nice heather bigger beads to show you color oh yeah. yeah it's so cute i love it oh my god i love it oh nice. so you you know what i mean I about mine. you could use different colors right did you add yeah. yours in white, Heather? Did you put a Mine? different color on the top? I'm just, this is just- Oh, that's your thread. thread. That's your thread. That's yeah. my thread. Sorry. I yeah. thought you topped it with white. I was like, Damn. Oh, it looks really good. It fancy. This looks really good. That one's my favorite one, I think. Okay, this Linda, let's do yeah, your magic. This is super cool. 
And you could do like, you could do high and then low and then high again, like. Well, and those triangle ones that you did, you could even do on the outside of the, you know what I mean? Like you could play with uh, the metal pieces of the edging on that too, right? Could be neat. I walked myself into a corner. <laughs> like the metal pieces of the edging. <laughs> well, you know, like the metal ones where you have different shapes, you could yeah, do yeah. that stitch on the outside of it, right? Yeah, Which you totally cool. could. Yeah. yeah, Linda, I was awesome. Linda, I was totally worrying that was going to happen tonight. to me. <laughs> I think I'm going to go back and just reduce it. And then well, I think Heather's the trick of like going smaller around the corner. Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do. I think that's yeah. Linda's trick. No, I, 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 I I've got to undo mine because I, I blocked myself into the corner. So I need to, I think I'll just do two, stop at three and then reduce, then get around the corner and then I'll do a big one. <laughs> Yeah, I am so into this. I'm so glad I jumped into this workshop. <laughs> Mind blown. Well, glad you came. I knew you would like it. Mm -hmm. I was like, you're better than I. So I was like, I was like, I need somebody to benefit here. I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> your beadwork on your moccasin vamp looks great, Julie. Well, it's like, I'm trying. And it's like, I got, it's like, they're going to be nice when they're done, I think, but it's, you know, I did the ones with Heather's, um, the two uh, sisters that do the seal skin. Yeah. Um, ones and, Vanessa they, and Veronica. Yeah. Yeah. The flower, the flower sisters, and they were so great and it turned out really good. And I, I made Travis a pair of um, uh, moccasins, which was cool. And then Nahani made her own. So she decided to not use the seal skin that they had sent. She designed her own beadwork and did her own vamps. And she like walks around the house and she's like, I'm so proud of myself because I know how hard these are to make. And she was just like, just like beaming or whatever. And then we did a pair for Maria and we're like half done. And I, cause I've been helping her cause she's only nine. Right. So it's like um, some of the heavier stitches harder, like in the, in the hide. So, but, and then I'm making these ones are the, the family that, that, you know, uh, Shannon and um, Shannon and Ryan, Ryan. Yeah. And so, they did a workshop with all the indigenous faculty and staff and so they did um but they're like summer shoes because we just got we, there's no fur or um no um uh whatever that inside stuff is there so they're not like i think they're just like summer mocks right so they're cool they're different like this piece is like the outside piece that you like put a wrap around on the back and i haven't really seen that before so and she said you could do beadwork. And then I was like, well, I got to uh, do some beadwork on this if if she did the vamps for us. So I was just like, <laughs> I, was like I need to put some effort in. <laughs> Where do you get your supplies in Winnipeg, Julie? Trading posts. Yeah, trading posts. We go, we, um, Kathy gave me a couple of sites in the, I mean, Kathy would be the person that really asked. She's, she's the real beater. I'm just, I went uh, there and then they were, they had a sign that says, call us if you want to buy anything. So that's why I couldn't get the, <laughs> the tell on. I was like, oh no. They don't have any there. Oh, you have they to go don't. to a fabric store to get that. Me and oh. Heather ran into that a couple of times. So, and, and where did we ultimately find it? I, I ended up getting some at Michael's, Michael's and it was just the thicker um, felt basically. Yeah. It wasn't the proper, oh. uh, but it definitely like those earrings that Nohani are making. That's what she's using. So fabric land. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have any. We oh, went to three different ones. It's off and on when they have it because it sells out pretty quick. I know out here it sells out really quickly. Yeah, that makes total sense. There's Bessie's beads in Winnipeg that might have pollen and some. Ooh, yeah, okay. I heard about that downtown or something. Yeah, I can't remember the exact address, but there's that place. And then um yeah, you can order. I think Jean probably knows some good online sites. I think she gave me the names of a couple of them, but I can't remember. We tried ordering some from the Dakota Beads, um, but I, I didn't end up, I like didn't end up getting any. Like we looked a couple times and then of course Nahani wanted everything. And then I was like, uh, you, I'm just going to go to the <laughs> thing and grab a few kinds and that's that. <laughs> you need to go to Dakota Beats and experience that store. <laughs> well, she would lose her mind. So yes, that's a, that is definitely, we should just do that as a work trip. Where is it? In Sioux Valley. So it's about, about um, 45 minutes from here. 
and it's Dakota Beads. And it's um, a bead worker who used to do replicas for museums and she just does amazing work and regalia. And same with her husband, who um, is a really wonderful quill worker and bead worker and used to be my student back in the day. And so she started this store. And so she has like all the best thread and all the best needles and <laughs> always does <laughs> pellin <laughs> when you need it. So yeah, it's fun to go um, for a road trip there. Yeah, when the border opens up, that's definitely something we could do for sure. Mm -hmm. And they have horses, so you can go and hang out with the horses too. And bison. <laughs> Is there ice cream? Like <laughs> no ice cream, no. <laughs> but it's Starbucks on the way. <laughs> of course, Kathy's got her treats all mapped out. I do. Slightest. Mapped out. Well, I just quickly did. Um, I just I know Heather is excited about that technique but i just wanted to show you guys quickly, like the fun that you can have um the colors oh my goodness oh, yeah that's awesome well it's like i can't really see the colors very well but basically you you'll 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 figure it out when you're doing it like the first row is white so always the first bead that you put on is going to be white and then you just follow your pattern as you go it looks better See, the little beads are really hard to see. Mm. So yeah, last night when I was getting ready to do this workshop, I was like, oh no, this might be a total bomb with the little beads. So if anyone ever does a, a beading workshop on Zoom, go buy big beads. Because <laughs> these ones here are their size eights, I believe. The, yeah, I didn't even know. I, I dug these beads out from who knows where and when, but I was really glad to have them because you can actually. Well, and you can see how your them. thread's going through them too, right? Because they're kind yeah. of the transparent, which also makes them helpful too. Yeah, and with the edge beading, that's also something to consider is that you're going to see your threads on the outside. So um, some people like it to be more camouflage, but actually, like if you use a different color thread, it can add to the creative look of it when you're done. Uh, Athalie, how are you doing? Um, I'm not doing very well on the uh, stacking, the big stacking. <laughs> um, okay, are you understanding the concept? No, I just, I just like you to sort of show it again. Um, okay, sure. So the stacking two by two? Yeah, the, the big one you did, we're up to five. <laughs> oh, this one? Okay, I'll just yeah. continue doing this one then. No problem. Yeah. It, it is tricky um, because they, 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 you have to, um, hmm, how can I describe this? Sometimes the beads have a mind of their own and they want to sag they want to tilt one way or the other way. So you just have to tug on it a little bit to get it to where you want it to go. Like beadwork is very much like what you see is what you get. Like however it's sitting is how it's going to stay. Um, so you want to get it to how you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have um, four beads on there now. Athalie, is it okay if I start here? Is this a... Starting point yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just uh, starting on one. <laughs> I have to jump into my last meeting of the day, but this was awesome. Thanks so much, Jean, and nice to see yeah. you, everybody. Yeah, see you later, Heather. Talk Thanks for later. coming and joining us. See you tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to add five beads on now. Oh, hi, I'm on seeing stuff. Guess who's here though? Come say hi. It's a, it's a, yeah, no, it's me. Oh, hold on. Look who's here. Hi. 
Hey, how's it going? I'm doing really well. It's super well <laughs> now you gotta well, come and say hi. Yeah, it's it, it is very hot here. Like we're we're jumping in the lake after this. Well, I'm literally like I can't even hold the needle because it just keeps slipping through my hands because it's so warm and I like I'm just like oh my god, it's so hot, so hot. Okay, so Athalia has cool. the five beads on. Now I'm going to travel up through all yep. five of those beads. Right. I'm just going to tug on it. I'm kind of leaning over that way a little bit. So I'm just going to tug on my threads a bit. Now I'm going to add more. Start traveling down now. Yeah, this, this stocking stitch looks really great with the small beads. Yeah. Really, really nice. These these beads are gigantic. Well, I'll be getting a pair of earrings that Heather will be making, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rocking a pair right now, actually. These are the birthday ones, one of these ones. They turn oh, over they're there. beautiful. Yeah, they do. She, she's got a secret little talent that uh, I was already teasing her. I was like, forget your doctorate stuff. I was like, just, you, just do it. <laughs> okay, I'm traveling down still. I'm going to put three beads on and travel up through those three. And I'm actually running out of thread, but I'm going to travel down until I get to one. I'm going to add two more. Can you do um, beading on like in the middle of the of the fabric? Do you go down every every single bead? Do you sew into the fabric and go, or do you sometimes let a couple beads go and then go into the fabric? Hmm. Does that Can make sense? Describe that again. Can you <laughs> I say think that she's again? asking when you're placing the beads down, like mm -hmm. how I've been taught by Jean Crouchy is you go, you do the two beads and then like, but she does the double the double needle style, which I like, but. Um, but I, like, that's what you're asking about how to, when you're doing the bead work in the middle, are you stitching each individual bead down? Yeah. Oh, like doing applique bead work. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you'll have to come to the next workshop then. Yeah, I will. I will. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be, um, yeah, that'll be fun to do that. Everyone that, does it so different. That's uh, what, this is what you call applique? Yeah. 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 Material. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, um, depending on what I'm doing, um, depends on the technique that I choose to use. So if I'm going to do lines, I really love using two needles. Um, mm -hmm. And I do every second, usually every second bead I stitch down. If I'm making something that's really fine, and I really want the lines to stay still and where I want them, I'll do every single one. Okay. Um, often it just depends on what, what it is, what size it is, what it's going to be used for. Um, Ooh, I have Linda. Yeah. Those look great. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, there we go. Nice. She has got a secret talent too. I saw all her handiwork. Oh, does she ever. Oh, my oh. goodness. <laughs> Aww. Are you blushing now? <laughs> you, do, you have a special gift, Lynn, Linda, for sure. Yeah, you got the you got the jam. Did you want my mailing address? No, just kidding. <laughs> Look it into my DMs, Kathy. I got stuff. <laughs> we can do a trade someday. I would be honored to do a trade with oh, you. I'd love. Okay. So, um, Athalie, did you catch that, that, that last one that I did? You catch no, that? could you show it again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I keep looking down and you're doing so. <laughs> I'm just going to okay. walk, so, put my needle yes, down that, and watch. That's, 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 that's the way for sure. <laughs> okay. 
I'm just going to re-thread here. Okay, so you needle down, athlete, all eyes on me. Yeah. <laughs> So starting by coming up through here. So my one bead is on. I'm gonna put two on now. Oops, I hit my camera. It's so close to the table. I got my two beads on there. So I'm going to travel through the two beads now. I think it would make sense if I work this way. Is it easy to see it this way? Oh, well, that's better. Yeah. Okay, I've been upside down the whole time. Okay. Okay, so now I need to sew upside down. Three beads are on. So now I need to travel up through those three beads. Now I'm going to add four. So we're going to travel up to five. So what sort of objects do you do this edging for, Jean? This, I, I like using this, um, um, like I was saying before, um, when I made, a, oh, I wish I had some pictures. Um, like a, say like a leather a leather bag that has a flap on the front of it um this this i've used this to do around the edges of the flap um i've made little wallets that have um or like tobacco pouches or like little mini mini things that have this edging along the edge of it like it works really well on like, yeah, like picture like a little pouch, like a, like a half circle or like an almost circle. It works really well on round, round stuff, okay. but it works well on straight as well. Okay, Athlete, you're still looking at yep. me? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I am putting five on now. That's like real awkward because now I'm going upside down. Um, okay, hold on. And then if you guys could see the setup here, it's pretty crazy. The, the living room has been transformed for you guys. So traveling up through the five beads. They're a little saggy. These beads are kind of heavy. Right. If my yeah, stitches were a little closer together, they would probably be standing more straight, but they're further apart. So see how they're kind of leaning over when I let go. But when yeah. I pull on it, it looks nice. But when I let go, it, it leans over. Hey, so my stitching yeah. could be closer together for sure. So now I'm going to add four. And then I'm going to go through four. Wow, this is really something for the brain here. <laughs> um, sewing upside down. <laughs> your camera around if it would end up with the same results i can, i'm not touching this camera 
You don't understand what I went through to, to do this. That I'm not touching this camera. The camera stays in one spot. I can't, I can't move it, Linda. No, no, I get it. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate all the efforts you've come to come to do to bring this to us so it's just so interesting like I mean I wonder how many people have learned how to be during the pandemic like how many lives have been changed because of zoom and people <laughs> you know I've I've watched some people teach beating and and it's been amazing uh some people really have a, a great knack for for teaching uh, for me I've just been petrified to do this I think you can count yourself as one of the in the group of those that have a great knack for doing it. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I, I just love Julie. <laughs> I know. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> okay, so now we're at the end. I'm gonna put the last one on. And doing this this technique does take quite a bit of thread. So you do want to keep in mind when you're sewing with beads and you're using lots of thread like it's ideal to to um to have double thread because you are going through and through and wearing it down so there we go we started with four so that's another thing you could go four you could start yeah. with three four five and you can get like a kind of looks like a dinosaur mm. uh, back yes, but, um, so should you work yeah, so should you work with the beads upwards? Because I've been working with the beads downwards and going left to right. Should you be working with them upwards and going right to left? Hmm. Sometimes all the words confuse me. Um... <laughs> um, well, as you've been working upside down, I've, that's how I've been working. Let me see I've your I've been work. going from... Yeah, I, my stacking is hopeless, but yeah, uh, I don't know if you can see that, those bits there. Can you see it? Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. You got Sorry. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the stacking. Yeah, two it's, by two. it's just this. It's just this. The yeah. two by two stacking is it's exactly just this the multi -post. same. That's just what? Yeah, yeah. It's just the five stacking, um, <laughs> but I'll get it. I'll get it. it. You will get it. It's the the five stacking is exactly the same as the two by two stacking. The one where you start with four and then just keep adding two and two and two. The only difference is you're adding one additional one each time you go to go up and down. And it is get it does get trickier because you do need to have, um, I would practice the other ones first and you, your stitchery will become better and yeah. you'll figure out your spacing between things. Like for mine, um, they're, they're, they're too far apart, um, but it's, it's good enough. Like, I mean, I'd be happy with this if I made something, but I, I don't tend to be a perfectionist. So this is just, uh, I'd be happy with this because they look like they're stacked. There's a little bit of a wobble going on over here. Um, when you start to see it wobble, you just have to, you just gotta, you gotta figure it out. Yeah. Like I said, with the beating, right? Like right. It's, you just keep doing it. You keep practicing at it and you will see you will see progress you absolutely will no matter what level you are no matter what you're doing you will see change if you keep doing it yeah so, this, mm -hmm. it's the first time i've done bead aging mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, so first time it never looks to... it never looks as you want it to look but you now know no. how it's supposed to look so just keep doing it and yeah. you, you will get there. Yeah, by the end of the week, you'll get there. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been writing notes as I've gone along, so. Yeah. You could Google, I mean, I don't really Google and do things like that myself so much, but I'm sure you could just Google edge beading and you would, you would find some um, helpful links for sure. I know that the first one that we did, the one that I call the zipper stitch, 
it's uh it's also referred to as the pico pico edging p-i-c-o-t so if you look up um, i have seen some great videos on the pico uh edging um that shows you step by step and um there's a there's a woman on instagram uh striking stick is her name that's her name uh she's she's shown some excellent videos on uh on how to do beadwork as well um all all stitches uh also um culture bead they had uh, an image of a uh, edge beading sampler that showed all the different kinds of edge beading like guys today is just a little bit of the edge beading world um edge beading also goes into um fringe fringe right right now we're doing edging things that are tight but you could also do dangly things like the earrings that that julie's wearing that's a form of edge beading right so my auntie made this um let's see here kathy too um, isn't isn't this better. one isn't the zipper there's a there's also like some metis history there in terms of the the stitch right well it's sherry um thinks it's based off of um, working with quill work that it's like a translation to the way edges would have been done with quills you know there's that no you might be thinking of the tracks like in applique beading oh yeah those tracks yeah those are you know this is outside of my wheelhouse so i gotta lead on my friends that know much <laughs> more than me <laughs> There's pretty cool. Um, I really love quill work and beadwork and the the common ground between the two because so many people don't know very much about quill work. And now that we have this whole new generation of people who are beading of all ages, not, now they're 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 learning about quills, right? Um, because what was before beadwork, it, it was quills and working with things from nature, right? It wasn't glass beads. So if you if you get a chance to look up um, edge beading or edge quilling qu using porcupine quills for edging, it's phenomenal. Yeah. So I taught a class at the university years ago, and the other day I was cleaning my computer, and you know, like sometimes in life you like look back or like you catch yourself do you catch yourself seeing who you were before you are now and you kind of have a moment of like wow like shit like hmm maybe maybe i am somebody <laughs> like i have accomplished something in my life kind of, kind of, kind of feeling. so i forgot that i had taught at the university for four years and i was going through what i used to do was i would document the students work throughout the year and at the end of the year, I was always trying to advocate for this program to be offered um, as a as as much more than what it was, um, and and also to always be taught by uh, native people. So the last time it was taught by a non-indigenous person, and it's for indigenous teachers. It, there, there's just all these politics behind all of this, and it was really sad. But what I used to do was take photos of everyone's work and. Um, it was just like something fun for me to do. And a lot of them never really realized um, what they were doing and what I was seeing them do. And at the end of the year, a compilation, I would send them each a file of like all the work that they had done. And, and sometimes years later, the students would be like, I can't believe I learned how to do that. And, you know, you just, things change and you, you become more um, grateful and you realize like, oh, wow. Anyway, I was looking at all these photos and we did a, a session on, we worked on quill work and this one girl made a purse. And the, the only thing they needed to do was learn the technique. They didn't have to finish anything. They just needed to do basically a sampler of, of one kind of quilling. And she made a bag with a dragonfly on it with the zigzag technique and the band technique. And then she edge quilled it. And I, I don't even know how to do that. I didn't show her how to do that, but she just went above and beyond. And um, yeah, so if you get a chance, look up uh, quill work and it's really neat to to learn what you've learned today, but also look at how, how edging would have been done before beads became um, a source for us to create with. 
Yeah. There is um, a piece for this exhibition. I get to co-curate um, a, a knife sheath that's quilled. And because I know how to quill and um, I've been lucky enough to teach too. And I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to replicate it. And it's from about 1802, this Métis piece. And I, I can't get it. Like I just, it's the perfection and there's technique. So I keep trying to figure it out and not yet, but it's just incredible. And the colors are still really vibrant in the quills in that. I just, yeah. I'm really lucky to be able to know a little bit, but I'm determined just to figure figure it out <laughs> to do yeah. it as well as this this ancestor artist did. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you're stubborn, stubborn like that. that. I'm stubborn <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay, so if Linda is wanting to say something, Let's see your sample. Um, oh, you want to see? What do you want to see? Well, I just want to see your sampler again. I got a little bit more space left. <laughs> oh, my sampler? Oh, my, my, my little sampler? Yeah. I'm just looking for another design. I'm trying the big zigzag. Which one? Oh, yeah, the pink. Okay, this was the, the, the starting point. We did our little zigzag. Well, and then we moved on to the orange, which is the single. Okay. And then we moved on to our stacker. All right. So that's five techniques. I thought that would be enough for us today. Okay. Um, so then there's the pink, which is, I don't know what the name of that one, but four by three, four by and three. You, for that one, when you go back through the bead, are you just going through one every time? That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then the last one there. All um, right. But I wanted to show you guys this. My auntie made this. She makes these beautiful watch bands. Mm -hmm. um, but the edging how can i show you this the the fringe edging it's kind of yeah. like mm, they're like linked together oh, wow. I don't know if you can kind of see that oh wow they're they're linked <laughs> i can't kind of show you but if i could sprawl it out maybe i can just put it down and sprawl it Do you know what I mean? They're like linked into each other. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you do uh, do one loop, then you step back, and then you start the other loop, and then you step back to the center and you do another loop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It looks really neat. I'm gonna try yeah. that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and you could also like with the edge beading. I know I had mentioned um, using all the same size beads, but you could actually have fun by using different t sizes of beads. You could use two large beads, or you could use large beads for your baseline. Thinking of the zigzag, you could do large beads on the bottom, and then you could do a small one um, for your, your, your second bead, right? So you could have like a row of bigger beads, and then your top row would be smaller. But I mean, <laughs> there's so many different things you can do. It's, it's, it's really fun. I'd love to see what you guys get up to. And after then the just thinking as you were talking, Jean, on if you do the single row of beads, then you can do like brick stitch on top of that single row of beads. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is like the beginning <laughs> to a whole bunch of other stuff for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is brick those... stitch how you make like the earrings? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I took that class. I took that. Yeah. Class. Yeah. So this is essentially. It's 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 not free hanging. We're 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 doing the edging onto a piece of material. Whereas like Julie Julie's earrings are there. It's all just beads. It's all just made out of beads and thread. Mm -hmm. um, it's not attached to any material. That's the difference with what we're doing today. Yeah. Yeah. I really. I really. I, what kind of earrings would you call the ones that are on material? They have a um like applique i get oh yeah i guess so. oh those i made those ones for linda <laughs> those are that's so great i oh, definitely want to do that next so those are edge beaded with the zigzag the zigzag edging yeah they're darn beautiful and then i wear these ones are my favorite ones so these are the ones i made at the bead symposium last year and like I well, look at both of look at them. <laughs> what I love about beadwork, if you're making two things and oh, cool. you forget something on one side, 
the, it can totally change the look of it. So I forgot to put the yellow. I, I don't know why, but oh. <laughs> how different it made it look by not putting the yellow in. But I love them. <laughs> but she liked them. So I was like, oh man, I thought, oh, I'm not going to make two, like two more. And then I was like, well, Linda's getting these and I mailed them to her. I, I was uh, very, very happy to receive these. I'm like, <laughs> I, the fact that they don't match makes me love them even more. <laughs> well, the fact that you were there when I made the error too, I was like, oh no. <laughs> I didn't cause the error, but it, <laughs> <laughs> but it was awesome. Good, such good memories of that gathering. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sad. I was, uh, it was amazing. It was my mom and I still talk about it. And my mom. It was actually, awesome to meet your mom. That's what I was going to say. For me, the highlight was getting to meet your mom. <laughs> I know. My mom's like a superstar. Like she's, you know, when I was growing up and we'd go to the mall, like I'd just be like sitting there like, okay, like, come on. Sometimes I'd be like, mom, I'm waiting in the car. Like, cause yeah. everywhere you go, like Charlotte, like everyone just loves her. So she's like a celebrity in Thunder Bay. She's, she's a celebrity. My mom um, used to speak, uh, my mom's a fluent speaker in Ojikri, and she um, used to um, do a radio show on, on CBQ there, and it was called Indian Faces, so she would, um, every, I think it was every Friday for half an hour, she would broadcast uh, up north, and she would interview people in northern communities, and it was awesome. I don't know how to speak the language, like, I, I speak a little bit, but... Uh, no way am I fluent. Uh, hopefully in my lifetime I will be though. Um, but she she did that. So um, everyone knows her because of that. And even people who who didn't speak the language would listen to the show because there was so much laughter. There was so much laughing all the time. And, and you know, like laughter is contagious. You hear people laughing and even if you don't know what they're laughing about, it makes you want to laugh, right? It's a kind of a cool thing. Uh, so now she's retired and she, 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 she wants to propose to CBC to have her own show here in Thunder Bay again. And she wants to, um, her, she wants it to be her show because that show before wasn't her show. She was told what to do and, and, and all that. So she's like, I want my own show. And she's like, and I want the premise to be um, but she's a residential school survivor and she's been going to counseling her whole life to deal with her trauma and to be able to t speak to it, uh, you know, like in the 90s or late 80s would have been when I found out that um, she went to residential school and she was a part of a, a movie that was called uh, Sleeping Children Awake and basically this film uh, interviewed people, it was an opportunity for people to share what happened to them and so i went to the you know she was on, on a, at a podium in a church basement or something and we we're sitting there me and my sister and i don't know how old we were we were young like maybe maybe 12 or 13 like i don't know but hearing my mom talk about that was like a pivotal thing for me in my in my brain like i was just like what like who, like someone hurt you? Like what? Like it was just devastating. It was devastating that happening. So yeah, it's just, so now she's where she is now. And she, you know, with the truth and reconciliation and doing the, um, having the opportunity to, to tell your story, she did. She, she contemplated it for a long time, but she went and they did her recording or whatever you call it. And, um, she spoke to it and that's what she wants to do for her radio show. She wants to speak to the ladies. She wants to go from, she wants to talk to people. She wants people to talk and be heard. And I'm just like, holy fuck, mom. Like, oh, sorry, we're recording. Sorry. Oh, it's but okay. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, holy man, mom. Like to go from, from there to all this time and then come to be able to help people um, is, is pretty cool. It's pretty, pretty awesome. So I really hope that they, um, that they, they take her up on it and do that. And I know like during, they had a year, I think two years ago, it was the year of indigenous languages. And I had asked the Thunder Bay place here. I said, why don't you guys 
um, play Indian basses again, like just just play it and rerun it. And and they said, oh no, we're, we're not going to do that. And I was like, oh well, you should do that. And they ended up taking all the tapes because nothing had been digitized back then. So all the tapes got sent up to Yellowknife uh, to be digitized where they are now. And they called me and asked me if I would translate the tapes because I wanted this access to the tapes so I can listen to them as a source of my learning to translate them for my learning. So they thought I was a translator. I was like, no, but why don't you ask my mom? Like <laughs> ask the person who did the show to translate them. So that's what's happening now is they're, they're gonna hire her to translate the, the 215 episodes. So anyway, geez, I was just talking a lot there. That was oh, awesome. Oh. I was like, I was going to let anybody ask a question for you. So I feel like that's a nice way to kind of roll it up. Anyways, I want to, <laughs> you know, I want to say Chimar, Chimar, oh my God, you can just see my brains just like done. Marcy <laughs> Chimigwich for all your time and energy and uh, the feeling is mutual. There's such, so much love I have for you. And so, and I am really appreciative that you tried it. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I was like, and oh, it was yeah. so nice to see so many faces I know really well, and some new faces too. And of course, a big thank you to Marika and uh, the U of W crew. And so, yeah, um, thank you. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much. Um, it wasn't. Uh, it, I thought it was going to be really hard, but it was. It was okay. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys, for being great. Thanks. Ooh, yes. Yeah, everybody yeah, needs let's it. Let's everyone see what you what you did today. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. There we go. I'll do a screen grab. <laughs> did this. Yeah. That's all I did. <laughs> oh, wow. You oh, did a lot. Oh, Some of you did oh, so many. One. <laughs> this one's my best. Hey, everybody, hold it up. I'll do a shot. Okay, hold on, hold on. Hey, just give me a <laughs> I'm going to there smile like you guys gotta send me a picture so i can post it on the instagram well that was fun <laughs> so i guess um we're gonna wrap it up here but um um i will be doing another workshop um that will be the applique beating so we'll be doing a simple flower um so i'll have to figure that out too We'll have to well, figure it, out when that will be. Yeah. How do how do we find out about it? Do it. Uh, on, <laughs> it will be on the website and it will be on our and we'll post it on Instagram, of course. But do yeah. do you have like a sign up list, Julie, for what for workshops or do we have to no, just we go just, and check it out? I just well, happened to see this one by total chance on Instagram, I think. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, we just, um, the website is Abajibuan New Media Lab. And so then on the website, we post um, the workshops that are upcoming. And then there's also the past ones that we've had that have been recorded. Um, and then when we get a date, we'll, and it probably won't be to the fall, to be totally honest, because it's like, you know, it's time for the bush and the lake. <laughs> So I think that, um, yeah, so I think if, if, um, if, if you're looking, we'll, we'll probably post something end of August, early September to do something. Does that make sense? Great. We have a little newsletter too. Like there's like, yeah, I was like, I don't know is, if anybody's got suggestions of how to communicate more. I'm happy. I'm happy to hear it. Also. We're also on Facebook. Oh, oh yeah. Wait. Thanks, Erika. We're also on Facebook. You can tell that's not my forte. I was like, uh -huh. thanks, Erika. <laughs> Either, so it's not as active oh. as the Instagram, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Will so... you be putting it on um, Eventbrite as well? <laughs> Will you be putting it on Eventbrite? Oh, probably. Yeah, Marika, you want to answer that because you you end up doing some of that stuff. Yeah, all of the um, events that require registration will be posted on Eventbrite. Oh, okay, lovely. Thanks. Okay, so this is the part of Zoom that's like kind of awkward. Like, are we done yeah. now? Okay, I'm gonna end it, but I'm just gonna tell you, you guys we'll we'll get you here soon too, Jean. It would be great to see you in real life. Oh, I would absolutely love that. And if anybody needs help along the way, just track me down, and uh, happy to help you out. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you, everybody. Thank you.
Okay. The time where we thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. you take care.